Hey guys, Chef Mark here. Today we're gonna make a braised veal shank. You use the same recipe with pork shank if you feel like. Today we're gonna use the veal. We've got a bone in here on both of them, some meat around the outside. Good flavorful broth in there. It's gonna make this very nice and tender in the end. The next thing I need to get for this braise is gonna be some herbs for it. So I'm gonna grab some sage and some rosemary. I've got the larger ones that come in the smaller packs, which is really nice and convenient. But these will add a lot of depth of flavor to the dish and they hold up to a longer cooking time. Next thing I'm gonna grab for the dish is our pansering flour here. The reason why I'm gonna have you grab the pansering flour because it's ground in such a way so that it allows the protein to shine through when you caramelize it, but it'll still give us a nice crust. It also has a little bit of salt and white pepper to it, so great for seasoning. All right, so let's put these shanks together. First thing I did is yesterday, I planned ahead, bought all my stuff, and I went home and I took my shanks out, put them on a plate, seasoned them with salt and pepper ahead of time. What this does is it draws in a little bit more flavor for it, so it's a little bit deeper in flavor in, in the end. So I'm at that point now, so what you gotta do before you cook them is just come by. If there's any excess moisture that's on the outside, we're simply patting that dry and, and bringing that up so it sears nice and dry in the pan. I turn my pan on, um, we're at about a medium high heat or so. I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of our extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna wait for that to faintly smoke. I've got a pretty strong flame here, so we're gonna bring it up quick and go right down to medium high. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and I've got my pan searing flour and we're gonna dust the outside of it. I caution you not to put a lot of pan searing flour on the outside, just a small amount, because what we wanna do is accentuate the flavor of the meat as opposed to browning the flour. The, the flour helps to get a little bit of a crust on the outside, but we don't need a ton of it. It's not necessarily meant to thicken this dish in particular. So a little bit on the outside, just dust it lightly, and that's gonna allow that flavor of the meat to shine through once we go to sear it. So a little bit smoky. I'm gonna place that inside and I'm gonna brown this on the bottom until it browns about a quarter of the way up the sides or so. Really what I'm looking for is a really nice golden brown, deep rich flavor out of it. So we'll let it sear. All right, so these have seared beautifully on both sides. I'm gonna take those out. If you see, we've got a great color on these and that's in the end gonna give us a lot more flavor. So don't rob yourself of all that flavor. Make sure you really brown those nice. So we're gonna take now a tablespoon of garlic cloves, which have already been chopped. And I've got a full package of our mirepoix. This is that carrots, onions, celery. It's gonna give a good vegetal taste to the dish in the end. Next, we're gonna take two cups of white wine. We're gonna add all that in, and we're gonna bring it back to a simmer, and then we're gonna let it go for about 10 to 12 minutes until that reduces in volume by half. Now that we have our white wine reduced and we've got that nice herbaceous smell to it, and that's what we're doing here. We're trying to build a base so that we're gonna cook our shanks and that it's gonna absorb all that flavor. So if we have season here, the inside of our shanks are gonna taste seasoned in the end. So I'm gonna take a 28 ounce can of coarse ground tomatoes. I'm gonna to put in our shanks back on the inside. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit and we're gonna bring this back to a simmer. We're gonna season the liquid a little bit because I just added tomatoes that don't have any seasoning in it. So, a little bit of salt and pepper. Bring this back to a simmer and make sure all of your liquid is nice and even. The white wine's mixed with the tomatoes. Mirepoix's mixed around nice and even. Then we go on with the lid. And we're gonna go in the oven for two hours with this. We're gonna write it 350. We're gonna add a little bit of herbs later in the cooking process, but right now we're gonna go into the oven. So it's been two hours. We're gonna pull our shanks out of the oven. Let's take the lid off. And you're gonna notice that these are really nice and gorgeous brown in there. The liquid's reduced a little bit. It's nice and caramelized in there. But to add a little bit more depth of flavor to this, we're gonna add in a tablespoon of chopped rosemary and a tablespoon of chopped sage. I'm gonna mix that in to the tomato sauce. And then we're gonna go back in the oven for about 15 minutes. This time we're gonna leave the lid off so we caramelize a little bit more of the top and some of that rosemary and sage start to really permeate the sauce. So we're back with our shanks here, 15 minutes in the oven, and these things are absolutely gorgeous. The tops have caramelized a good bit more, and each one of these is completely falling apart. You see them have a little difficulty pulling these on the plate, but I'm happy about that because these things 
are super nice and tender. And to serve these, I'm just gonna go on a plate like this with a little bit of the sauce, but I might take that sauce and mix it up with a little bit of pasta. One of the artisan pastas would be great. Um, I might mix it in here and toss it for the last minute of cooking, but this is one definitely not to miss.